The presence of the divine was a major aspect in everyday life for the people of the Bronze Age. In Troy, we have chosen to focus initially on those deities of the ancient Greek pantheon that showed to play a major role within the Trojan War. Hera, Zeus, Ares, Apollo, Athena, Poseidon, and Aphrodite. If we look at the Divine Will menu panel, we see all gods start with zero favour, which means their cults are at the neglected level. As the players develop the cults by building temples and spending on lavish rituals and sacrifices, their influence in society grows through respected, to celebrated and ultimately worshipped. The more time and resources you invest in a particular god, the more benefit you will gain from their cult. But keep in mind, religion requires constant attention. Every turn you will lose favour automatically. You are free to worship as many gods that you want at any time, if you have the building space and the coin that is. With each level of favour gained, the greater the benefits. Here I am worshipping Zeus, and you can see the amount of buffs that I gain. Every god has their own focus, and some heroes may have an affinity and synergy with one god over the others. Like Aeneas, who believes he's Aphrodite's son, can build a special building called the Great Temple of Aphrodite, granting him 300 favour. To fully develop a cult, you should start by building a dedicated temple. Building and upgrading the temple grants one-time big surges of favour that will push you ahead on the reward track. But once built, you need to continue worshipping by either using Hetacoons or recruiting a priestess, an agent who can perform the ritual practices action on a settlement with the temple, gaining favour with the god the temple belongs to. For a hefty cost of food, you can perform a Hecatomb to a selected cult which will grant you a boost in favour. This can only be done once every several turns. This cooldown is shared between all the cults, so use it wisely. If your needs change, you can rededicate the temple to another god, but this will take time and resources. If you want to use the cults to the maximum benefit to always give you the upper hand, there are some royal decrees that will lower the cost and construction time of temple buildings and ritual practices if you control the entire region. Aside from gaining passive benefits from the gods and their cults, you can also actively beseech their support through prayer. For an offering of food and gold, you can request a chosen god to impart a temporary effect that will last for a few turns. The effects you gain are quite varied, each god having their own flavour. For example, Poseidon, god of the sea, will make your armies immune to deep sea attrition. Athena, goddess of wisdom and strategy, will give extra ranks for newly recruited units. While Hera is protector of the homeland, causes enemy armies in your territory to suffer attrition damage. The more the cult is respected, the stronger the effects of the prayer will be. One last thing to mention about the gods. When they breach the worship status, you will be able to recruit unique mythical units units and agents. Using the special recruitment interface will allow you to recruit them into any army anywhere on the campaign map, while epic agents can be obtained from their selection in the usual agent recruitment panel. Making good use of the different cults and their priestesses can aid you whatever your playstyle and in any part of the game. Their powerful effects can aid you in battle, strengthen diplomacy and defend your lands. Whether the gods exist or not is up to you, but know the cult's benefits and ire are very real.